Hi, I'd like to welcome everyone to my uh, live stream tonight at five o'clock. And I would need to know if you can hear me. I have a new microphone stand. And so it's kind of over there. <laughs> so uh, can you hear me? I just want to let you know. While a couple of people are jumping on here, um, loud and clear, yay. I am going to look at this. Someone from Dubai is watching. And then I've got Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Oh, that's me. From Tennessee, from New York. Isn't that amazing? I am absolutely loving this. We've got Sheila and Sharon. William. Hey, sister. Glad to see you. Hey. So I look at. Wow. I'm excited. So um, let me see how to playing with the banners. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Let me put that on there. I have while we're waiting for a few people to jump on. I have I wanted to share a little story about heaven. One of the someone has asked for me, well, Dorothea has asked for me to expand on one of the encounters that I had in heaven. And so while we're kind of waiting for people to hop on here, I thought I would kind of expand on that. I was going to see if she's on here, but I don't see her yet. I'm sure she will be. But anyway, I'm Kim Robinson. And since 1988, the Holy Spirit has been taking me to heaven and has been showing me things in heaven. And then I would come back and share about some of the things that I've seen. And so one of the stories that I have shared, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, let me see if I can. I have uh, this. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's all kinds of different stories on there that I have. And um, so you can always catch up on some of those. This is going to be, I'm going to put this on, um, you can find me on Truth Social. So I will repost this on Truth Social. I will also, it's supposed to be live on Rumble if I did it right. So let me know if you are seeing this on Rumble. That would be great. And like I said, my YouTube channel is Heaven is Real and Fun. And then if you want to send me a card, uh, that's my, that's the mailing address. And some people have asked about uh, the year in love offering. And so if you, would, if you're interested in doing a love offering, you can do it there at my, at my website. Let me see how to, I know I need someone to help click these buttons, but I don't have anyone right now. So <laughs> I'm going to read some of your comments while some of these people are coming on. I have, Tamara from Dubai. Here's another one from Dubai. Let's see if I can get that to show up. Oh, she's up now. I think you said it was three o'clock in the morning. Whoo. Here's one from Australia. It's 10 o'clock there. Well, good. I like, I like that. And then we have Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. And Long Island, New York. Don't you love technology? If I can just figure it all out, that would be great. <laughs> I receive this. <laughs> You'll have a team. I have a couple that's wanting to help me, but I haven't figured out how to get them on this yet because I'm just learning how to do StreamYard. And so you guys will get to play along with me and you'll get to watch this develop. <laughs> it's like, I remember when she was doing this in her bedroom. And now, look, I've got... So this is my prayer room that you guys are at right now. So we're, we're all in my prayer room. And so this is um, where I encountered Jesus right here in this room. So we're all getting to do this together. It says, how do I, how do I get to heaven? Well, you just hang out and we're going to walk you. It's so easy. It's easy. It's easy. Don't make it hard. Don't make it hard. You'll find out. You'll see how easy it is. We're going to walk you through that here in just a few minutes. Uh, Colorado, they have like t a foot to 10 inches of snow today. So 
I'm not looking forward to that. Connecticut. Ah, okay. So anyway, let me go. Sorry, I don't know how to get that off. <laughs> let me go back. <laughs> Hide. Okay. So um, one of the encounters that I had in heaven was I ha had been worshiping and Jesus took me. We I had stepped over and Jesus was standing there with me. And he comes up and he gives me a big hug. And he we're standing there and I see kind of off in the distance a big pearl gate. And so it's in Revelations 21, 21. It's also on my YouTube channel if you want to go listen to the whole whole thing. But in Revelations 21, 21, it talks about the 12 gates being 12 pearls. Well, I'm standing there in heaven with Jesus and he is standing beside me. And I see kind of in the distance this huge gate that is a pearl. It is a one huge pearl. It's probably, so I'm probably about 50 yards away and it is huge. It's still big. And so it's like the size of a tree, of a big tree. This one pearl is the size of a big tree. And I can see that this it's one pearl and I can see that it has a gate that is made into the pearl. Like it is uh, carved in, you know, maybe it's carved into the pearl and the gate, the gates move. So, and so it's one big pearl and the gate is like carved out of the pearl and so the gates move and it's still out of the same pearl it's not i was looking at it and i thought is that pearls put together made into a gate but it's not it's one pearl and the gate is made the gates are made into the pearls so that's the way that's you know um that's the way that i see it okay so whenever you whenever you step over and you're with jesus in heaven the way that you see things is the way that you can perceive them. So the way, you know, and even the way that you, you know, some of the things that you see in heaven may be different than the way I see them. The way I see things may be a little bit different than the way someone else sees them because it's the way he shows it to you so you can comprehend it, you know. muted how about that hang on just a minute um webcam there we go we're back <laughs> uh-huh that has never happened well where'd you go i'm back <laughs> or the chat I, I am going to pray i am going to pray over you so i'm glad i figured that out I figured i had to get back on here Okay, so we're back on. <laughs> the devil doesn't like these stories, but God does. God loves, he, you know, so last night when I was asleep, I was, the Holy Spirit was even giving me the title. The, the title of this is Healing the Heart to Hear the Father and Encountering Jesus. The Holy Spirit gave that to me last night. And I was just on fire in the middle of the night. Just, he's, he's the Holy Spirit was like, Daddy wants you to tell this. He wants to bring people to him. And um, so I'm not going to get distracted. <laughs> I'm going to remember where I was. Anyway, so when I first started this, like in 1988, I was down in my utility room in front of my washer and dryer. And I had... <laughs> I had, I, I even brought, I even got a couple of them just to, to share with you. I had this little picture. Remember these from, from Sunday school when you were little? This is all, this is all I had. So I had this in my hand and whenever I would go down into my utility room and I had my Bible open and I was just worshiping Jesus and I was, I would just try to focus on Jesus. I was just getting it, trying to get my body quiet, getting my mind quiet and just focusing on Jesus. 
but my mind would wander off, you know, like, okay, I've got to pick up the kids at three. So I need to like take some snacks with me. I'm like, no, I got to focus. And so I got this little picture of Jesus, which that's kind of what he looks like. Not really though. And I would hold it in my hand and I would read scriptures and I would have some like soaking music on. And like right now I have some music on. I don't know if you can hear it. If you hear it, if it's too loud, let me know. Uh, you may not be able to hear it at all, but I had some soaking music on and I had this little picture in my hand and I would just, I would just talk to Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I just, I love you. And I would quote some scripture and I would sing some songs. And then when my mind would wander off, I would look back at this picture, get it back in my head, stay focused on Jesus, keep your mind focused on Jesus. And I would just go back to this picture close my eyes and I would picture him in my mind, in my imagination. And I would just talk to him and just tell him how much I love him, how much I just, I love him. I just, in whatever scripture was coming to mind at the time, whatever I was reading at the time. And then after a, a little bit, when I had my eyes closed with this picture in my imagination, all of a sudden that face, the face of Jesus turns to me because this one is sideways. He turns to me and I, he says, I love you, Kim. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This, this, this is talking. And then I close my eyes again and then I can see Jesus in front of me. I could see him in front of me. And he started talking to me and I was just like, that's Jesus. And then I could see his hair and his hair is just chocolate brown and it's beautiful. And he was smiling because I stayed focused. I stayed with him. I didn't leave. I didn't get distracted. I didn't wander off. I stayed in love with him. I kept talking to him and he started talking to me. And he started, his mouth started moving. He started moving his head. I could see his hair was moving. I'm like, you're real. You're real. How about that? Jesus, you are real. And he just laughs because he's really, he loves you. He loves your sense of humor. He loves the fact that we're all learning. Moravian Falls. I'm just going to kind of click on some of these. Hello, Chris. Um, let's see what this one says. Can't hear. Oh, you can't hear the, that. Okay, that's that's good. Um when are your eyes open whenever you saw Jesus the first time? Oh, well, I just shared that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so he started talking and that's when I realized that he is real. He's not just uh, an imagination. He's not just out there someplace in the distance. He is real and you really can see him. Your eyes, because you are a spirit, a soul and a body. OK, I'm not going to get into that, but you are body, soul and spirit. And so your spiritual eyes are always open. They always see him. But it was my head that was having the problem connecting to seeing Jesus. And so once I realized with my eyes closed, once I realized I could see him and he can see me and he can talk to me, it was just like he's real. He's and he and it's that easy. It's that easy to see him. It's just your head. OK, so I'm going to share one scripture with you and I'm going to kind of walk us through a little sozo tonight because that's what the, I just really felt like. That that's what the father was wanting us to do. But this one scripture is first Corinthians two, nine and ten. However, as it is written, no, eye has seen what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived. That's your that's your body. That's your physical eyes, your physical ears, your mind, your your soul. And it says, you know, you no one can see God, but you can't see him with your physical eyes, but you can see him with your spiritual eyes. What no mind has conceived, those things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. So we see him by by his spirit, by the spirit. The spirit for these are things God has revealed to us by his spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that is revealing these things to us. It's the Holy Spirit revealing to your spirit the things of the spirit. 
the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So it is the Holy Spirit that is talking to your spirit, that is leading your spirit to Jesus, where you can see Jesus, where you can encounter Jesus. And I recommend, you know, when when you um, when you're seeing him, he is not offended. Like you've heard me say before, he is not offended by you saying, are you Jesus Christ, the son of God that died for my sins? That's alive now in heaven. You can ask him that. Ask him. Because if it's not him, he leaves. You know, if you have angels appear, which you will have, ask them, are you sent from the throne of God? By God, are you sent from the throne of God? And I have had times that they have gone, ah, and they just vanish. They'll just like disintegrate or they'll turn and run, you know, so they don't want you to ask that. <laughs> so ask that, you know, and um, the, um, so it is, it's good to ask. It's good to ask. And that way, you know, for sure who you're talking to. Um, I'm just, I'm just reading some of these, uh, some of these comments that people are getting on. Um, yay. I'm excited. Okay. From Washington. Okay. So I was wanting to kind of walk us through a little mini Sozo. Okay. And a Sozo is, it's a healing of the heart because, you know, just recently as we have come out of Thanksgiving and we have come out of Christmas, there's a lot of uh, family issues <laughs> that we had to encounter. Right. And, and, friends and things like that. And one of the things that the father was sharing with me is kind of a, is what he was wanting me to share with you. So he was saying that you may have had a grandfather that left your grandmother for someone else. And you saw that as a child. You witnessed that. You witnessed grandpa leave grandma for someone else. And then as time goes on, you get a little older. And then your father leaves your mother for someone else. Or maybe your mother left your father for someone else. Since you get a little bit older, you have a boyfriend. He leaves you for someone else a couple of times, right? And then you get a little bit older and maybe your husband left you for someone else. And he was saying they left because of demons. Demons inspired grandpa <laughs> to leave grandma because of the spirit of lust. May is a spirit of addictions. But this, these encounters, it was a spirit of lust. Your dad left your mom for someone else because of lust, because of demonic activity. And the, the Lord was daddy God, which you, you guys know that's what I call him because he's really sweet. Daddy God was saying, I will never leave because I don't have demons. And I thought that is, <laughs> of course you don't, but that's very profound. God is not going to leave you for someone else. He doesn't have demons. He is not going to leave you when you start having these encounters with the father, when good things start happening to you, he is not going to leave you for someone else. He loves you. He has eyes only for you. He loves you and he is going to stay with you. He is going to, he is not going to turn his back and leave you. And one of the scriptures that I just happened to have run across this morning, uh, is in Psalms 124, 
And I just opened this up this morning. So Psalms 124, we can praise God over and over that he never left us. He is our helper. He is our defender. His wraparound presence surrounds his people and protects us now and forever. He is never going to leave you. Isn't that a wonderful? And so I just want, um, I was thinking about this earlier because I, I can't see you. I want to see your face. <laughs> I, want, I want to see your face. And um, so I'm going to have to have probably a Zoom session because I want I want to see you. I, I want, you know, I, I want to see your reaction. I do better. Oh, sorry. That was a quick one there, wasn't it? Yeah, rejection. And um, how long... Whoops, I lost that one. How long did you practice this? Um, I'm not sure what the practice was. <laughs> but I just want to encourage you that as we get ready to step out here in a few minutes. Anyway, I want to do a Zoom. So I want to do a Zoom session where I can get you together because I want to see your faces because I do better if I can see you rather than just talking to the mic, talking to a camera and seeing your and seeing your your words. But um so I will post that on Facebook, probably on Truth Social and, you know, on my YouTube channel. I'll probably post it on Rumble. And isn't that fun? I don't know how to get that off. OK, sorry. That is. <laughs> Zoom would be awesome. And I'm on StreamYard and I can have like 10 people, I think, on this. But I don't know how to invite you on here because there are some people I would love to have on right now. And so I can see your so I can see your face. But anyway, so I'll be posting those. And if you're if you would like to get on the, the Zoom session, that way I can walk you through a, a sozo via Zoom so I can see you because I do better if I, if I know that I'm making sense and you can hear me. Yeah, only 10. There's only 10 here for, for StreamYard, but I think on, on Zoom I can do more. So we'll find out. But anyway, um, so I want everyone, if you can, you can open up a Zoom account for free. Yeah, I have, I actually have um, the Zoom account where you can have more. So I um, should have more on that, I believe. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I want you to just close your eyes and uh, yes, and you can watch this replay. So whenever we're going through this, you'll be able to I'll, you'll be able to pause it and talk to Jesus and ask him some more questions and then start the replay back up again. And so that's what I highly recommend. I have a, a couple classes on the YouTube channel where you can pause it and you can ask him questions. So right now I'm going to have you, if you just close your eyes, close your eyes, <laughs> everybody close your eyes. Okay. So we're just going to close your, close your eyes. And I want, I'm, um, I'm going to just kind of fill in the blanks because I don't know what your answers are. You know, when I, when I do sozos with, with people one-on-one, -on -one, I get to hear their answers. So I'm just going to fill in some blanks. And so if I happen to mention a person, you know, like a dad and it's not your dad, it's your husband or it's your boyfriend or something like that, you fill in the blank with who you need to fill in the blank with. And if I am uh, forgiving them for things that you don't need to forgive, then Ask, you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what you need to forgive them for. And we're just going to, so you're just going to have to kind of wing it with me, okay? Um, so it's close your eyes and I, uh, I'm just going to start us in prayer, okay? Father, I just thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you, Daddy God, that you sent Jesus. to die for us. I thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you tore the veil 
It says the veil was torn. Whenever you died on the cross, it says the veil was torn. That's symbolic that we now have access to the Father. We have access to Daddy God. And it's all because of you, Jesus. You paved the way for us to step over and to be with the Father. So I thank you, Jesus. I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory for everything that is done tonight. In Jesus' name. So I want you to keep your eyes closed. So when we're just going to talk to Jesus, okay? So whenever you see Jesus, if you have pen and paper, or if you want to put it in the chat, I don't want you really in your head. I want you to kind of stay out of your head. But I want you to keep track if you can. Just maybe jot it down if you got a pen and paper close by, or if you want to put it in the chat so you don't lose the information, that's good too. So whenever you are praying, would you have your eyes closed? Whenever you're praying and you're talking to Jesus, how do you see Jesus? What does he look like to you? How do you see him? What is he wearing? Okay, I want you to say Jesus. Say it out loud because you're in your room by yourself where it's quiet. I want you to say Jesus. What do you think of me? Write down the first thing that you heard. You can put it in the chat or you can just write it down. Don't analyze it. And that's what I'm going to tell you is don't analyze because we're talking to Jesus. We're allowing the Holy Spirit to bring us to Jesus. So don't analyze what he tells you. Jesus, what do you think of me? Okay, I want you to say, Jesus, are there any lies I have believed about you? He says, yes. Say, Jesus, who do I need to forgive that taught me this lie? Maybe he said, yes, there's a lie that you have believed that I'm not close to you or that I don't love you. Maybe there's another lie. Maybe there was something else. Say, Jesus, who do I need to forgive? Maybe he said the church. Maybe he said your parents. Maybe he said your dad. So I want you to we'll kind of act this out. So we're going to kind of what comes to my mind is the church, the pastor. Maybe it was a pastor who taught you wrong. So we're going to with your eyes closed, I want you to lift up your left hand. and I want you to say, Jesus, I hand to you this pastor that taught me this lie about you. Or maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Jesus, I hand to you. And then you fill in the blank. That taught me this lie. That you're not around. That you're not good. That you're not real. That you don't talk. Or what you fill in the blank. What did they teach you? Jesus, I hand to you this lie, and I choose to forgive them for teaching me this lie about you. I choose to forgive them, and I break the lie. I break this lie now in the name of Jesus. I break the lie that you would ever talk to me or treat me the way my dad did or my pastor did. I break this lie that says that you're too busy for me. And I choose to forgive them 
for teaching me this. And that you would, I break the lie that you would ever talk to me the way this person did, that you would ever treat me the way this person did. I break that lie now in the name of Jesus. I want you to put that hand down. I want you to lift up your other hand. Jesus, what do you give me in exchange? What is the truth? What does he give you? Jesus, what do you give me in exchange? Maybe he hands you something. What does he give you? What does he put in here? Trust what you see. Trust what he hands you. What did he give you? Jesus, what is the truth? I want you to take that and put it in your heart. Jesus, I receive this truth that you're not too busy for me. I receive the truth that you are always here, that you hear me, that you're not going to walk out the door. I receive this truth that you love me, that I am your child. I am your bride. I receive this truth. Jesus, is there someone I need to forgive? Who is the first person that came to mind? I'm going to say an old boyfriend. <laughs> could be an old girlfriend. An old friend. It could be an old friend. Because that's kind of what comes, that's kind of what comes to mind. Jesus, who do I need to forgive? Maybe it's an ex-husband or it's an ex-spouse because we're going to break off some soul ties. Jesus, I choose to forgive. And then you fill in the blank. Jesus, I choose to forgive my old boyfriend. We're just going to call him Bob. I choose to forgive Bob. I choose to forgive him for all the bitterness and the way he treated me, the things that he said to me. I choose to forgive him. I choose to forgive my this family member. I choose to forgive my ex-husband. I choose to forgive them. And we're going to break off some soul ties, ungodly soul ties. If you've ever, if you've had an intimate relationship with someone, you have created a soul tie in the spirit realm. So we're going to break off some soul ties. Maybe you didn't have intimate relationship, but you had a close relationship when you've had a close, it can even be with a teacher. It can be with a, a pastor that you had a close relationship with, but it turned ungodly. There was an ungodly turn to it. So we're going to break off some soul ties. Okay. So I want you to say, Jesus, I break every ungodly soul tie with my boyfriend, with my ex-husband. I break every ungodly soul tie with them now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to see them like a hot air balloon that is tied to you. It's kind of the best way. Maybe you see it a different way, but I kind of see them like a hot air balloon and there's ties to your heart. And I want you to cut it. I want you to cut. Maybe you have to scissors. Maybe you can karate chop. I want you to cut. Cut every ungodly soul tie with them now. And I release them. Maybe it's a loved one that has passed away. You've had a uh, your mom passed away. Your dad passed away. Maybe it was one of your children that have passed away. And it's just like you can't go on. It can be a pet. You've lost your pet. And you just can't go on just like stuck in grief. You can be, you can be tied to a house. You can be tied to an identity. You can be tied to a job. You can be tied to a town. So what is it? that is tying you, break 
I cut every ungodly soul tie and I release them now. I release that pet that passed away. I release my child that passed away. I release my parents. I release my spouse now. I cut them loose. I release them now. And I call back. I want you to repeat this after me. I call back to myself everything that they stole from me. I call it back. Repeat after me. I call back to myself everything they robbed from me. I call back to myself my identity. I call back to myself your plans, your purpose for my life. I call back my innocence. I call back my purity. And I release them now in the name of Jesus. I release them. And I release the things that I have held on to that's theirs. I release it to them now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you bless them, that you bring them into their, their destiny. I thank you, Father, for setting me free, free from them. I thank you, Father, for setting me free. I call back my innocence. If you were molested as a child, you can call back your innocence. You can call back your purity. You can call back and be made whole again. I thank you, Father. I release them to you. Jesus, I ask that you forgive them. Jesus, what do you give me? What is the truth? What do you give me? And I want you to listen. What does he say? What did he give you back? Receive it. I want you to put it back in your heart. I want you to put your hands on your heart and say, I receive my innocence. I receive my wholeness. I receive a whole heart. I receive the mind of Christ. I will not be afraid. I break migraines now. I break bad dreams and nightmares now in the name of Jesus. I will no longer participate with you. I call back sweet sleep. In the name of Jesus. Body, talk to your body, put your hands on your body, say body. I release all trauma. I release all trauma from you now. You are free body. I want you to talk to your body. Body, I ask that you forgive me for causing you to go further than what you're designed to go. I, body, I ask that you forgive me for stressing you out. I ask that you forgive me. Body, I release all trauma in every cell of my body now. I release all bitterness. I want you to say this. I release all bitterness. Body, I release all offense. I release all offense. The people that have been coming to mind that you're offended with, especially coming out of the holidays, <laughs> you see that, you see their face, you see that conversation, close your eyes, and I want you to... Say, I release every word that was spoken during Thanksgiving, that was spoken during Christmas. I release being offended that they didn't thank me for the gifts. I release being offended that I didn't get what I was hoping for. That's a, an offense. It's simple. Just release it. I release being offended. I will not be offended. Jesus. 
I want you to say, Jesus, what did you give me? <sighs> Receive it. I receive being rescued. I am worthy to be rescued. I thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now we're going to break off some generational curses. Okay. <sighs> wholeness. He gives you wholeness. Hallelujah. So you can put up, put in here. Oops, that changes so fast. You can put in here, what did he give you? Let's share some of the wonderful things that he gave. What did he give you? Peace like a river. <sighs> breath. Ah, breath and life. Don't you love that? Peace like a river. Okay, so we're going to break off some generational curses. You can have, you know, maybe all of your life you have felt, um, you have felt unloved. You have felt like you weren't worthy. You have felt unwanted. Um, maybe you were molested. It's like you were molested, your mother was molested, your sister was molested, your aunt was, you know, it's just like this sexual perversion has been kind of in your family. Well, that's a, that's a generational curse. And a, a big pile. <laughs> and so we're going to break off addiction. Addiction can be a generational curse. Your dad was an alcoholic. Your mother was an alcoholic. They were drug addicts. There was prostitution. There was all these things that it just seemed like everyone in your family is kind of plagued with. It's a generational curse. So let's break off and just hatred and, and anger, maybe just a fit of rage. You're just like everyone in your family is so angry. You got together at Christmas and everybody was yelling, <laughs> you know, well, that's not, that's not the way it is in heaven, right? So that's not the way it is in heaven. So let it be on earth the way it is in heaven. So we're going to break off generational curses because we do not want that passed down from you to your children, to your grandchildren and generations to come. So let's break off. And I may, I'm just going to say some things that kind of come to mind. You may have other issues in your family. So you just fill in the blank. If I, if I say something that's not, you know, part of your, part of your family, you fill in the blank, right? Allergies, that's a good one. I'm just kind of reading some of these generational allergies. There's no, there's no allergies in heaven. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, I'm going to pray for a couple of body parts here in a minute after we break off some generational curses. So I want you to close your eyes because that way you can't see me. <laughs> I can't see, I can't see you anyway. So <laughs> close your eyes and we're just going to focus. And I want you to say, Jesus, I choose to forgive. And it's who, who the first person that comes to mind, I choose to forgive my dad for opening this door of sexual perversion. I choose to forgive my mom for opening this door of anger, of rejection. I choose to forgive my parents for addiction, for teaching me about addiction, for teaching me about drugs and about alcohol and about perversion, for showing me the, the pornographic books I choose to forgive my dad for leaving those laying around. I choose to forgive him. I choose to forgive my aunt, my uncle for molesting me. I choose to forgive them now. And I break every sexual perverted spirit 
off of my parents. I break every addictive spirit off of my parents, off of my grandparents, that spirit of addiction, of alcoholism. I break it off my grandparents now in the name of Jesus. I break off sexual perversion off of my grandparents that opened the door. I, I choose to forgive my great grandparents for teaching for opening this door of sexual perversion, for opening this door of addictions. I break it now in the name of Jesus. I close that door. I forgive them and I break it now in Jesus name. I close that door of addiction. I close that door of sexual perversion now in the name of Jesus. And I command it off of me. I command it to be released from me. I close all the doors of addic addiction, of alcoholism, of even smoking, I break it now of all addiction, all perversion. I close that door. Demonic spirits, I release you from me. You no longer have power and authority over me. I declare the blood of Jesus Christ over me. I declare the blood of Jesus over my parents, over my grandparents, over generations past. I declare the blood of Jesus to purify my generational lines. I declare the blood of Jesus to purify you, to purify your children. It will not be passed down to your children. I break off this perverted spirit. You will not be passed down to my children or to my grandchildren or generations to come. You will not be passed down that spirit of anger. You will not be passed down. I stop it now in the name of Jesus. I stop all bitterness, all anger. I command all doors to be closed. You may feel things leave you. Release it. I just command it off of me. You no longer have an open door. I close all doors. You feel things leave? You feel stuff leave? Isn't that amazing? I thank you, Jesus, for your blood. I declare the blood of Jesus Christ to be, to wash over me. All demonic spirits, you have to leave. That spirit of murder, of anger, of bitterness, you have to leave now in the name of Jesus. I declare the fire of God over my eyes over what I have seen, over what I have witnessed. I declare the fire of God over my ears, over my mouth, over my hands to purify me. I thank you, Father, for your fire, for your fire to burn out all bitterness, all anger, all resentment now. I release it. I will not partner with it any longer in the name of Jesus. Of a critical tongue, of being judgmental, I release that now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. Put your hand on your heart. Jesus, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me with your love. Purify me. Purify my generation. Close every door that I have opened, that generations have opened before me. Close every door. I thank you, Father, that every door is closed now. Devil, you no longer have authority over me. Devil, you no longer have power and authority over me. When you start feeling those addictions, when you start feeling that anger come in, when you start feeling that perversion starting to creep back in, you remind it, no, I have closed that door in the name of Jesus. And you keep that door closed. Jesus, I ask for your blood to saturate me, saturate that door of perversion that it'll never be open again. Someone has been tormented with fear of, of sexual perversion. You have been tormented with the fear of what has been behind that door of sexual perversion. God is releasing you now of that fear. Jesus is closing that door of fear. 
that perversion, that abuse that you went through, Jesus is closing that door now. You no longer have to be afraid. I really declare the blood of Jesus over that door. You no longer have to be afraid in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I want you to take a deep breath. Jesus, what do you give me? What do you give me? What does he give you? I receive. I receive. Put your hands on your heart. You can type it. You can put it in the chat. If you after you, after you receive it, you can put it in the chat. <laughs> Jesus, I receive purity. I receive freedom. I receive freedom from fear. I, I just see you crying. You're just free. I see someone crying. You have been so afraid of of the abuse and of the anger and of what you went through. Jesus has set you free. Jesus has set you free. You no longer have to be afraid. I thank you, Father, for total freedom now in the name of Jesus, by your precious blood. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. I worship you. I thank you, Daddy. All right. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to seal that before I pray for some body parts. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for us so that we would be free. I thank you, Jesus. It's all because of you. You have set us free. The scripture says that you were beaten beyond recognition for us to be whole, for us to be free. I thank you, Jesus, for your freedom. Jesus, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Someone was given a pearl. Yay, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? All right, so I'm going to pray. I am going to pray for some body parts, okay? Um, I'm going to pray for some body parts. So you can put in the chat if you need some body parts. We're just going to kind of, kind of take a breath for a second. And um, because God wants you whole. He wants you spirit, soul, and body. He wants your body whole. He wants you to be totally healed healed of all demonic activity. You know, the scripture says that Jesus made a show of them openly. Where is that scripture? Where's the scripture when you need it, right? Ah, here it is. Colossians. Colossians 2.15. Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and the principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He's not their prisoners. They were his. Hallelujah. So it's, you know, Jesus made a show of them openly. Let me see how to get that off. Do, 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 do. Jesus made a show of them. So that's some of my books down there at the bottom. We'll come back to that here in a second. Immune. Okay, so let's see what you need. Some healthy eyes. Healthy eyes. <laughs> for a new back, for tendonitis, healed from cancer, new bones. I've got some great bone. I have some great bone scriptures for you. So the so as you've heard on my YouTube channel, uh, and just the other day, whenever I was on, is that the body parts in heaven. Some people have really freaked out about that. There's like, ah, why does God have body parts in heaven? Well, I, I don't know. He has body parts in heaven. Why? I don't know. But they're there. And they're not there for us whenever we get there. We need them now, right? We need the eyeballs now. We need the bones now. We need the legs now. We need the spines now. We need it now. We need a sound mind. We need thick hair. I, <laughs> I agree. We need free from skin cancer now. That's not there. It's here now. And so um, 
so he, he has made, he made us in the first place. So he knows how to fix us, you know, um, sometimes the, you know, like the, the man at the, at the pool that was waiting for the angels to stir the pool. He had been there. What I think the scripture says he was there for 38 years. He was there for 38 years. And if you read that scripture, so I'm kind of into Sozo. I'm into, you know, the, the heart issues. So when I heard him, Jesus says, do you want to be whole? And he said, but I don't have anyone to help me. It's their fault. They get in before me. And so what I heard is that, and then Jesus heals him and says, go your way and sin no more. Well, he's been at the pool for 38 years. What kind of sin could he have been committing? It's not like adultery. It's not like, you know, he was breaking in, you know, breaking into the bank. So I was hearing that it was heart issues. He was blaming other people. He was out of his bitterness. It's somebody else's fault. It's all somebody else get in, got in before me. I don't have anyone. It's self-pity. So sometimes our sickness could be on the inside. As you release, go back, play this over again and walk back through the sozo and forgive people. Forgive people that you have been blaming for the way that you are. You know, I've been getting emails that says that I can't do this and I can't do that because of this and that. So, you know, and they they're blaming. They blame other people. So release them. Release people. Release the bitterness from your heart. Release people. And I think as you release people from the bitterness and from the things, your body will be healed. So since we already walked through that, I believe that some people are going to get healed tonight. So I have some great scriptures. And I don't have scriptures on every single body function there is. <laughs> so I couldn't find one on the spleen. I'm sorry. You know, or on fingernails. Uh, you know, so if you've got... I do have some teeth. There was a lot of teeth issues. It was amazing. I had so many teeth issues, um, which I thought was kind of funny. There's a lot of teeth problems. Uh, so I found some teeth scriptures. There we go. Certain teeth and hair. Isn't that funny? I don't know what the, what it is with the teeth, but there's a lot of teeth issues. So we're going to let's pray for teeth right off the bat. Let me find my scriptures on teeth. And so the. So the body parts in heaven, when I saw the spines hanging and I saw the legs hanging, I saw the eyeballs and I saw the lungs and he said, new skin. And so Jesus said, the way you get it from heaven to the earth is you find a scripture that you can stand on. You don't need a bunch. Just find one, something that that you can get from your head to your heart and get it in your heart and say, Gee, God, Daddy God, who never leaves you, Daddy God. This is what your word says. And I ask for your angels to go into the body parts storehouse and to bring down this. And maybe you can't find scriptures. You know, you need a finger. You know, maybe you need an earlobe. <laughs> the scripture is let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Daddy God, so this is how you do it. We'll go. We'll start with. Um, let's do teeth. <laughs> Let me lick my fingers. Let's do teeth real quick. Song of Solomon 6.6. 6. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes, <laughs> which have come up from their washing, all of which bear twins. Not one among them has lost her young. And so that's, you know, you can say, Daddy, I want teeth like I want teeth like a hue. I don't know, but then you know, big white teeth. I want big white teeth. Legs and the, you know, I know that this is this is, you know, when you need a leg, you need a leg. Because I was Psalms. I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because I can't see 
can't see what I typed out for you. Psalms 116.9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. That is a promise. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The blind, Matthew 11.5. I like this one because it has a lot of different things in it. The blind receive their sight. So if you need eyes, the blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers, that's your body. That's your skin. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf, you need new ears. Hearing, you need your hearing fixed. The dead are raised. The poor have good news. Preach to them. So there's a lot of things just right there. So uh, a foot, teeth, I will walk before the Lord, yes. Liver. You know, and so whenever you're, whenever you're going through these, also listen. So the eyes, right? Let's do some couple of eyes. The eyes, the Lord. Oh, so this is Psalms 146, 8. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. He lifts up those that are bowed down. So that's also a spine. That's also a back. The Lord loves the righteous upright in heart and the, and in right standing with him. Isaiah 32, 3. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. He, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. I really like Matthew 15, 30. After this one, I'll pray. The great multitudes came to him, having with them those that were lame, those that were blind, dumb. That, you know, even if you stutter, you have stuttering issues, maimed. And many others, they were cast down and he made the, he made them whole. I like the maimed. You had to look up, what does the maim? Maim is missing body parts. Are you missing body parts? He will make you whole. His, he loves you to be whole. He wants you whole. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And this is an retina. I pray, Father, for, um, let's see what all we have here. <laughs> Some of you people are really funny. Father, so close your eyes and put your hand on whatever it is that you need. You need eyes or ears or brain or lungs or legs or if you need legs. Father, I thank you, Lord. You showed me the body parts, room in heaven for a reason. I thank you, Father, for your angels to go now and to bring down, grab those legs for every person that watches this now, that hears this, bring down the legs now from the storehouse in heaven. I thank you, Father, for legs to come now in the name of Jesus. Those that are missing body parts, I ask that you bring them down now in the name of Jesus. Every liver, every kidney, every spleen, Bring down the lungs. I ask, Father God, for your angels to go and to bring the lungs down from heaven. Brand new lungs. Angels, go and bring down the lungs now. Put your hands on your heart and say, I receive. I receive lungs. I receive new legs. I receive new body parts. You have missing body parts. He will make you whole. I receive, I thank you, Lord, for your angels to go and to bring down the eyeballs, the ones that, that match. <laughs> you have blue eyes. I thank you, angels, for bringing the right color eyeballs. I just, I just declare eyes to come now in the name of Jesus for ears to be open. I break off cancer, every cancerous cell in the name of Jesus. I declare life into your cells. In Jesus' name, I declare life into every cell, every cell of your body. I declare life from God, the life of God into your cells. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, complete and total health in the name of Jesus for the backs, for someone's your back is hurting. I just I break off that pain off of your back now. In the name of Jesus, I break off migraines in Jesus' name. There's um, for nerves, 
any kind of brain issues, any kind of inner parts, you have inner nerves, you have nerve issues of any kind, if it's in your brain, if it's in your feet, if it's in your hands, Proverbs 3, 8. He will be health to your body, your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, your muscle, all your inner parts, a refreshment, physical well-being to your bones. I declare to every nerve in the name of Jesus, life. Life to every nerve, refreshing to every nerve. I break off neuropathy in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. It also says, a happy heart is good medicine. A happy heart. Watch happy things. Watch joyful things. <clears throat> Watch things that make you laugh. Watch things that bring joy to you. Listen, pay attention to what you listen to. Just receive it. I break off autism now in the name of Jesus. That's in your brain. That's brain issues. That's nerve issues, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I break off this. Uh, autism, this OCD, um, things that chemical reactions from vaccines. I break that now in the name of Jesus and I declare life to every cell, every nerve in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, in Jesus name. Jesus, I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory. So I thank you guys. Make sure you post on here depression and anxiety. Yes, I break off depression. A spirit of suicide. I come against that spirit of suicide that has been released. I break that spirit of suicide and depression and anxiety now. I break off um, yoga. Yoga. <laughs> I think it's called yoga. <laughs> Um, anxiety. I break off all anxiety, all depression in the name of Jesus. I break off that spirit of suicide and I release joy. I release life into your bones, into every cell of your body now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father. So we've gone a little bit longer than an hour. And I just wanted to share with again, this is how I started is I had this in my hand and I would focus on Jesus. I just focused on Jesus, closed my eyes, focused on him. And then he started talking. And so for every person that um, orders one of my books, Heaven is Real and Fun for the month of January, I will send you one of these as encouragement. Focus on Jesus. And if you want to know how, do, how do you do this? Well, the manual is how do you do this? That's the, so the, in the manual, you can get from my website down there at the bottom, heavenisfun.com. I do sign each one. So order it from my website, not from uh, the other places because I can't sign those. I sign these. But if you order a <clears throat> heaven is real and fun, I will include one of these until these run out. Um, I have like, 20 of them. So, and I sign each one. I also have the children's book. Jesus is real and fun. It's a children's book. It's a coloring book. It has recipes in the back because Jesus loves to cook. You can cook with Jesus in heaven. Trust what you see. When you start seeing him, as your heart gets healed and you start seeing him, you start uh, <clears throat> experiencing him. Trust what you see. And he will, one of the places that he took me in the kitchen. We went in the kitchen and we cooked. <laughs> My husband loves to cook. So there's his cookbook. And uh, you can also pick that up from the website. But Jesus loves to cook. You can cook with Jesus in heaven. He doesn't use a recipe. <laughs> he knows how to cook. And he loves to dance. Someone uh, posted that they ice skated with Jesus. And I don't know if they read that from my book, but Jesus and I ice skated. You can ice skate with Jesus. There's snow in heaven. You can go snow skiing. You don't even have to know how to ski. You never get hurt. And um, 
it's just really fun. It's really fun. So thank you guys uh, for being on with me tonight. I'm sorry it went so long. Um, but I enjoyed it. It's a little bit harder when you don't have a face to talk to. So I hope all this made sense. And if it didn't, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm just learning how to do this. Thank you guys. I love you. And please post, you know, what you experienced when you watch this replay, please post, you know, what you experienced. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Let's see. <laughs>